Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve sallallahu ve sellem ve barak ala nebiyyine Muhammed. Ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve tabi'in. <coughs> Allahümme allimne ma yafa'una ve fa'na ve ma allamtena ve zidna ilmen ve amelen ve tevfiqen ve hudun ve maşaren ya Rabbil alemin. Elhamdülillah. We have reached the 38th chapter in the explanation of Kitab al-Tawheed, <coughs> which is a chapter, Babu Man Ata'a al-Ulama'a wal-Umara'a fi tahrimi ma ahalla Allah, aw tahlili ma harramahu faqal ittakhadahum arbaba min duni Allah. The chapter, whoever obeys the scholars and the leaders in making haram, making prohibited, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, <coughs> has allowed, ma ahal Allah, aw tahlili ma harramahu, aw making halal, making allowed where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited, faqal ittakhadahum arbaban min duni Allah. Then he has taken them as God's besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this chapter, the Shaykh Rahimahullah is going to deal, in this chapter and chapter after it, he's going to deal with two masail, two issues, two masala, which are attached to the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this chapter, the first chapter of these two chapters, the Shaykh Rahimahullah deals with those who and they obey the scholars and they obey the leaders in legislation that goes against the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> in the next chapter, the Shaykh talks about dealing or, or going to other than the, the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be judged and is seeking to be judged by other than the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And The ones who obey or who follow the scholars and leaders in doing or in making things haram, as Allah made halal, or making things, they are three categories. The first <clears throat> are those who do so, who follow them, and whatever they make halal or whatever they make haram, that it goes against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated. They follow them being pleased with that and loving it and hating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislated. And that is major kufr. That is major kufr. The second type of people are those who follow it, but they're pleased with, they're pleased with Allah's legis legislation. But they follow it because of some reason or the other. Any some reason, some of their desires, some reason, yeah, they have some benefit in it. It goes back to the desire. And in this situation, the scholars differed whether it is from shirk, minor shirk, or is it just, um, or is it a, an act of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It's a, a sin, yeah. It doesn't reach a level of shirk. But 
والله اعلم يعني it is from فيسك يعني it takes or it is um, it is a sin that doesn't reach the level of shirk والله اعلم and the third categories are, are the third category are those who follow them and the first two they know they know that this is the ruling of Allah and this is the ruling of the, of, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of these scholars or these leaders that they want to follow one of them prefers the ruling of these people over the ruling of Allah that is major sin that is major kufr the next the next set of people they prefer the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are pleased with the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but they do this because there is some kind of benefit for them in it they do it because there is some kind of benefit some kind of worldly benefit for them in it yani. and this doesn't reach a state of shirk Allah wa the third type of people who follow the scholars and the leaders are the people who are ignorant And he thinks, and you know, he's ignorant that this scholar or this leader is telling him something that is not in accordance with the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people are of two types. The first are those who, are, who have the ability, who have the ability to educate themselves and to know the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he does not, he does not seek after the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this case. He's sinning because he's fallen, he, he has fallen short in what he was commanded to do, which is try to seek the truth. The second category are those who do not have the ability to understand the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly. And in this case, they are overlooked. They're overlooked because of their ignorance. Wallahu alam. So this is basically the ruling of obeying the scholars and the leaders in making haram what Allah made halal or making halal what Allah made haram. The Shaykh Rahimahullah, he mentioned in this chapter, he mentioned some proofs. The first is the statement of Ibn Abbas. He said, Ibn Abbas, he Ibn Abbas, he said, Ibn Abbas, he said, Ibn Abbas, he said, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas, he said, Ibn Abbas, he said, he said, Stones are about to rain upon you from the heavens. Why? أقول, I'm saying to you, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, I'm saying to you, the, Prophet, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said, وتقولون قال أبو بكر وعمر, and you're saying, Abu Bakr and Umar said, وتقولون قال أبو بكر وعمر, and you're saying Abu Bakr and Umar said. In this ether, this ether was uh, yani it was reported by Ahmed. And this, this, the meaning of this uh, ather was reported by Imam Ahmed in his Musnad. But this exact wording was attributed to the books of Imam Ahmed by Sheikh Islam in Taymiyyah. And yeah, we cannot write, right now, we cannot find it in any of the books of Imam Ahmed that is found with us. Wallahu alam, maybe it's in one of the books that were lost from writings of Imam Ahmed. Sheikh Salam Taymiyyah, rahimahullah, mentioned this hadith or this, this athar with its chain, and he mentioned the entire, the entire athar, the entire narration with the chain of narration from Imam Ahmed. He said, Imam Ahmed said so and so, told us and so and so, told them, until he reached Ibn Abbas. And the chain is sahih, inshallah. And he mentioned it with this exact wording. So maybe it's in some of the books that uh, were lost from what Imam Ahmed rahimahullah, wrote. 
نعم uh, in this ether Ibrahim Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma is saying that you are working what you are saying Abu Bakr and Umar said and I am telling you what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said you deserve to be punished for this so uh, basically that is what Ibn Abbas is saying which shows that obeying other than Allah and the messenger in going against the ruling of Allah and the messenger is something that makes one deserves to be punished which is that is it is a sin طيب. the next proof that the Sheikh Rahimahullah used he said وقال أحمد بن حنبل عجبت لقوم عرفوا الإسناد وصحته and Ahmed ibn Hanbal, rahimahullah, said, عَجِبْتُ لِقَوْمٍ عَرَفُوا الْإِسْنَادَ وَصَحَّتَهِ I am astonished by people who know the isnad, they know the chains of narration, and they know when it is authentic, وَصَحَّتَهِ They know the chains of narration, and they know it's authentic. يَذْهَبُونَ إِلَى رَأْيِ سُفْيَانِ And they follow the opinion of Sufyan. What is meant here is Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, one of the great scholars of Islam. He, he, in the past, he, was, he had he, people who used to follow his madhab. Now, he, his madhab is not followed by anyone anymore. But he had a madhab like Imam Ahmed, uh, like uh, the Hanbali madhab, and the Shafi'i madhab, and the Hanafi madhab, and the Maliki madhab. There was the Thawri madhab also. So he says, I am astonished by these people who know the chains of narration and they know the authenticity of these chains and yet they go to the views of Sufyan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and this here basically is the proof that the Shaykh Rahimahullah is using, but he brings the explanation of Imam Ahmed. He says, وَاللَّهُ تَعَالَى يَقُولُ فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِهِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةٌ أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, let those who go against his command, yani the command of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let them be aware, let them fear. That a trial may afflict them. Or a severe, severe torment may afflict them. Then the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he explains what it was what is meant by the trial. He says, Atadri mal fitna al fitna to shirk. He said, Do you know what is fitna? It is a shirk. Lallahu ida rudda bada kawlihi and yaka fi kalbihi say umina zeri fayahlik. Maybe. If he refused or rebuts some of the statement of the Prophet وسلم, that Allah caused his heart and yaqa that some um, that moving away from the from the truth, from the path, from the straight path, may fall into his heart, and then he will be destroyed. In this Ayah, we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala threatens those who uh, go against the commands of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He threatens them with one of two things. The first is shirk or kufr as was explained by Imam Ahmed, and to see them fitna, and the second, أو يصيبهم عذاب أليم, or a severe torment. And this here explains the, the, the ruling of following others instead, following the rulings of others instead of the rulings of Allah and the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That sometimes it can be shirk, it takes you out of the fall of Islam, and sometimes it can be deserving of a severe punishment, which means that 
doesn't take you out of the fall of Islam, but it's a sin. And that goes back to the different type that was mentioned before, that if someone does it, being pleased with it and seeing that it is more better or it is better than the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that is equal to the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or that is allowed, even though you're saying it's not equal, but you're saying it's allowed to go to it, then that is major kufr that takes you out of the fall of Islam. However, if, he, if someone does that because of some inner desire, some worldly gain, then that is a sin for which he may deserve a severe punishment. Hatim radiallahu ta'ala an. He says, عن عدي بن حاتم رضي الله تعالى عنه أنه سمع النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقرأ هذه الآية اتخذوا أحبارهم ورهبانهم أربابا من دون الله الآية قال فقلت له إنا لسنا نعبدهم عدي بن حاتم رضي الله تعالى عنه سيد that they have taken their the pious ones amongst them, amongst them as lords besides Allah. And the ayah continues, وَالْمَسِيحَ بْنَ مَرْيَمْ and Isa عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ يعني they have taken their scholars and the pious ones among them, the, those who used to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship the monks as Allah He said, so I said to him, we, we don't worship them. The ayah is saying that they took their monks and their rabbis as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he's saying, we never used to worship them. He said, don't they make haram things that Allah made halal, and you make it haram, even though you know that Allah made it halal. And يعني, uh, he didn't... Explanation, يعني. he said, don't they make things haram, which Allah allowed? Don't they, don't they prohibit things? They make it forbidden. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it something that is allowed. And you, in turn, make it something that is forbidden. And they make things halal. They make things allowed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid. That Allah... You say that it is allowed. He says, فَقُلْتُ بَلَى So I said, yes, they do that. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, "Qala fatilka ibadatuhum." That is worshiping, because you are associating a partner along with Allah subhanahu wa taala in legislation. The one along with Allah subhanahu wa taala in legislating, and Allah subhanahu wa taala is hakimin, the also. Judge, he's the best of judges. <coughs> this was reported by Imam Ahmed and the Tirmidhi Rawaq Ahmed with Tirmidhi wa Hassanahu. And here, yeah, it is very clear in this hadith, this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he explained the ayah. As taking them taking them as large besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as making halal what they made haram and making haram what they made halal yani basically exact as the Sheikh mentioned in the chapter. The Sheikh says Fihi Masa'il, he said Fihi Masa'il are issues. Al-Ulat, it's Ayat al The first is the explanation of Ayat al The second is the explanation of Ayat al 
The third is paying attention to the meaning of the worship that Ali denied. And what is meant here is that Ali denied that they used to worship them like they would worship Isa alayhi salam. It is like prostrating to them, making dua to them, and so on. He wasn't talking about yani, obeying them and making things halal that Allah made haram and made in the opposite. Al-Rabi'a, the fourth, Tamthil ibn Abbas in Abi Bakr and Umar wa Tamthil Ahmed bi Sufyan. Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhuma making uh, an example with Abu Bakr and Umar. And he using them, you use them as an example. And Imam Ahmed using Sufyan al as an example. <clears throat> and, and these were great people who people, and these are great people who, whose statements have any great value in Islam. And Sufyan al is one of the great muhaddithin and one of the great fuqaha, one of the great uh, Jews of the Ummah. Abu Bakr and Umar, yeah, yeah, Abu Bakr and Umar, Abu Bakr and Umar, radiallahu anhu, Abu Bakr and Umar. You know, the two best of this ummah, the best people from this ummah after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Abu Bakr and Umar. And yet, Ibn Abbas is saying that you, you take their call in front of the call of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you should go and tell you alaykum hijarat min al The fifth, al-khamis, tagayyur al-ahwal. That the situations have changed. Ilahi al-ghaya, to the state. Hatta sara ind al-akthari. Until that, with most people, worshiping monks is from the greatest of actions, from the best of actions. And they call it walay. And the, and the worship, worshiping the scholars is called knowledge and it is called فقه. ثم تغيرت الحال إلى أن عبد من ليس من الصالحين. He said, then uh, the, 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 the situation changed and people started worshiping who people who are not even righteous. وعبد بالمعنى الثاني من هو من الجاهلين. And with the next meaning, people were worshipped even though they were ignorant. Basically, what the Sheikh here is saying is that yani, a lot of people started worshipping these pious people. And they would worship them, they would slaughter for them, they would swear by them, they would they do a lot of things to them. Some of them even prostrate to their graves and, and things like that. And people count this to be from the best of actions. And Muslims who attribute themselves to Islam count this to be from, uh, from the best of actions. And they call it walaya. And then he talks about ibadatul ahbar, which is obeying people in making halal what things, or what Allah made haram, or making haram what Allah made ha halal. He, he said, and with the worshipping of the scholars, it was, is what is called Ilm and fiqh is what is called knowledge and fiqh and understanding of the deen. Then he said this, yeah, if it was righteous people who are worshipped, and it, that would be lesser than the state that it is now. And this he's talking about his time. And if it was the scholars who were worshipped in that by who were obeyed in making haram with Allah made halal and making halal with Allah made haram. And that would be lesser than, than it is now. He said then if the situation changed until people who were evil people, or bad people, they started to be worshipped. And people started worshipping people who were evil, who were known for their evil, for their evil deeds, not righteous people. People start worshipping them. And they would prostrate to them, slaughter for them, like people worship for Aaron and so on. In the time of the Sheikh, there were people who used to worship some people who were involved in magic and involved in these things. And these are, are not righteous people. They're 
يعني they, they used to oppress people and so on like Shamsan and so on uh, and then he said and people started worshipping يعني obeying people and making haram what Allah made halal and making halal what Allah made haram with this second meaning people who are ignorant يعني people who are ignorant people took them as leaders and made whatever they said, said is halal they would say it's halal whatever they said is haram they would say it's haram without trying to understand what Allah's, what Allah's ruling is in this situation. Allah <clears throat> طيب. Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he moves on to the next chapter. Babu Qawlillahi Ta'ala Alam tara ila alladhin yaz'umuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablika yuriduna an yatahakamu ila ta'afruti wa qad umiru an yakfuru bih wa yuridu shaytanu an yudillahum dalalan ba'idah al-ayat. Uh, the first chapter is a bit more general than this chapter. This chapter has to do with the in disputes and in settling disputes and in, in these things. Yeah, trying to get the legislation or trying to be judged or wanting to be judged by other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by other than the sharia of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Sheikh made the start of this chapter, the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, Babu qawlillah ta'ala, Alam tara ila alladhina yaz'umuna annahum amanu bima unzila ilayka wa ma unzila min qablik. Do you not see those who claim to believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you? Yuriduna an yatahakamu ila ta'ut. They want to to go to be, to be judged by the ta'ut. They want to be judged by the ta'ut. And they were commanded to disbelieve in it. And the shaytan wants to mislead them far away. A far mis- in, in, in a far manner. The shaytan wants to mislead them far astray. In this chapter, basically, the Sheikh, as we said, is dealing with seeking the judgment or seeking judgment of other than Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this, this goes against the Tawheed. And if you want to be judged by other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala and by other than the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by other than the Quran and the Sunnah, then that goes against one's Tawheed. Now there are three there are three cases in this in in seeking the judgment of other than Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The first is that someone seeks after the judgment of other than Allah and the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, being pleased with it and loving that, and that is major sin. That is major shirk. It takes one out, out out of the fall of Islam because he's preferring he's preferring or he loves it. He's pleased with it. And, he, and that is making a legislator along with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the only one, the only shari', the only musharri' is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The only one who, is, who has the right to set down legislation is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being pleased with the legislation of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is kufr takes one out, of, one, one out of the fall of Islam. The second is that if someone does it, yani, seeks the judgment of Allah, Allah the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not out of being pleased with it or loving it, rather because there is some kind of a, um, a benefit for him in it. Yani, whether a dunya benefit, he is given a bribery, whatever. He gets something from it. But not because he ple- he's pleased with that specific ruling and he, he, he's pleased that that should be used instead of the ruling of Allah. Rather, he's pleased he, or he does it because he gains from it. He gains some worldly something or he tries to ward off something from him. Yeah, he, like, like bribery and so on. In this case, that's not 
kufr, but it is haram. And some scholars would say that it is shirk ashar. And there's difference of opinion whether it is haram or shirk ashar. And the third, the third type is that if someone is forced to use it and he has no other means but to gain his right except going through these legislations that are legislations that weren't set down by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and he cannot gain his right except through these methods. In this case, then it is allowed for him because he, he does so and he hates it. And he does so, but he does so and he, he still hates it. And he doesn't love it over the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. In this case, it is allowed for him and he's not sent. Wallahu a'ala. Okay. In this ayah, the first ayah, the Sheikh mentioned the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Adam they want to they want to be judged by the tahut and what is meant by tahut is other than the legislation other than the legislation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَدْ أُمِرُوا أَنْ يَكْفُرُوا بِهِ While they were, command, they were commanded to disbelieve in the Tahut. They were commanded to disbelieve in the Tahut. وَيُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ وَأَنْ يُضِلَّ لَهُمْ ضَلَالًا بَعِيدًا And the Shaykh, the, the ayat, this ayat, we're talking about the hypocrites. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was talking about the hypocrites and he mentioned that one of their characteristics is that they want to seek legislation, they want to seek the, the rulings and the, the legislation of Allah than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the legislation of the Tawut. Tayyip. Which shows that yani, the legislation of Allah than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being pleased with it and being pleased with it is major nifaq. It's nifaq that takes one out of the four. Then he says, and when them do not cause corruption on earth, fill out when it is said to them, do not cause corruption on the on the face of the earth. They say, fairly, we are only yani, righteous, righteous. We seek to, to correct the affairs of people. And part of their corruption in the, on the face of the earth is that they seek the legislation of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it is, it is part of what, what they were prohibited from doing. Yeah, from, from their ifsad, from their corruption that they would corrupt on the face of the earth is that they would seek the legislation of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Sheikh also mentioned the next ayah after that, which is And do not cause corruption in earth, on earth after it, its affairs were, were corrected. And this ayah was uh, yeah, from, this, from the story of Shaib. When he's speaking to his, one of the things that he told him is that And do not cause corruption in the world after it was fixed. And from that, then he is seeking the, the hukum, seeking the, the legislation of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Sheikh mentioned the ayah, the next ayah. And in this ayah, we see that it is haram or it is prohibited to seek 
after the ruling of the Jahiliyyah from three points. The first is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah called it Jahiliyyah. Allah called the hukum, the legislation of other than him, Jahiliyyah. And as, as was mentioned before, that anything that is attributed to Jahiliyyah shows that that action is a, is a prohibited action. So that, that's the first part, that the first point in this ayah to show that seeking the, the ruling of other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prohibited. The second point is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in this in this sentence here, he's he is um he's rebutting or he's uh, it's like it's a, a question which means that which means to what has in it the meaning of prohibition. Okay? Would you do something like this? It's like, it's, it is as if you're saying, do not do such and such an action. That is the meaning of this question in this ayah. Are you seeking after the ruling of the jahiliyyah? Right? So the, the, the question in this, uh, in this ayah is basically like a prohibition. Do not seek. Is as, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, do not seek after the ruling of the jahiliyyah. And the third point in this ayah is the completion of the ayah. Allah says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُوْقِنُونَ And who is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in judgment for those who have certainty, for those who are certain. And there is no, it's as if, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, there is no one who can make a better judgment than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then if we know that no one can make a better judgment than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that shows that seeking after the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is haram because the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best judgment. طيب. Then the Shaykh rahimahullah he mentioned the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu ta'ala anhuma anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qala la yu'minu ahadukum hatta yakuna hawahu tabi'anni majik to be. He said none of you truly believe until his hawa, his desire is in total following of what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. His desires is totally in following what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with. And this hadith was reported as the Sheikh mentioned here. He says, hadith sahihun, rawaynahu fi kitab al Imam al Nawawi mentioned this in his book, Al Arba'in al Nawawi, the 40 hadith. He mentioned this. He said that this hadith is an authentic hadith that he reported in the book Al Hujjah with uh, an authentic chain. طيب. Uh, in this hadith, we see clearly that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, La yu'minu ahadukum. None of you believe until his hawa until his desire is in following or in total totally following what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with and this yani this here can either mean that none of you believe yani you are not a mu'min you are not a believer which means that that person is a kafir that person is a disbeliever and that is in the case when they are pleased and they prefer or they allow being or using the legislation of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it can also mean you know, you have a complete iman, and that is in the case of those who do it because of worldly gains. And not because they are pleased with it and they prefer it over the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they have worldly gains that they gain from it. So and it either this hadith either means yani, that that person doesn't believe at all or that that, that that person doesn't have complete iman. And in both cases, and whatever, whenever iman is denied or whenever the Prophet وسلم, negates iman from someone, that shows that the opposite of that action is, is, is wajib. 
that action becomes haram and the opposite becomes wajib. And so following the hukum the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is compulsory and leaving it off is forbidden. And whether it is shirk or not, it is wajib. Then the person who leaves it off can either become can either come out of the fold of Islam if this is a state, or if that is a state, he doesn't leave the fold of Islam, as was mentioned before. طيب. Then he says, وَقَالَ الشَّعْبِ الشَّعْبِ رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ وَالْتَابِعِينَ He said, كَانَ بَيْنَ رَجُلٍ مِنَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَرَجُلٍ مِنَ الْيَهُودِ خُصُومَةٌ فقال اليهودي نتحاكم إلى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم عرف أنه لا يأخذ الرشوة وقال المنافق نتحاكم إلى اليهودي لعلمه أنهم يأخذون الرشوة الشعبي رحمه الله basically in explaining the ayah that was mentioned before and the ayah that the sheikh started the, 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 the chapter with he said he was mentioning the reason for that ayah to be revealed he said there was difference between a man from the hypocrites and a man from the Yehud, from the Jews. They had a dispute. So the Jewish, the Jewish man said to, said to the hypocrite, let us go to the Prophet ﷺ and seek his judgment. Because he knows that the Prophet ﷺ doesn't take bribe. And the Munafiq, the hypocrite said, let us go to the Jews. Because he knows that they took bribe. They took bribery. So in the end, they agreed They agreed to go to a fortune teller in Juhayna. And they will seek his judgment. So this I revealed. Do you not see those who claim to believe in what was, uh, claim that they believe in what was revealed to you and what was revealed before you? And they seek the legislation of the Ta'ud. This hadith or this athar from a Shabi is Mursal, and it, he's a tabi'i, and he reported that so and so happened. So, yeah, the the author is not authentic, but the general meaning is sahih. And basically, basically, this is basically like an explanation of the ayah. It helps to clarify the ayah. Allah Alaihi Then the Sheikh Rahimahullah he mentioned an next narration in in regarding to the um. The reason for this item to be revealed. وقيل نزلت في رجلين اختصما فقال أحدهما يترافع على النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال الآخر إلى كعب بن الأشرف. This was reported from Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنهما. It was reported by Al Kalbi and it is also weak. It's not uh, an authentic narration. However, generally, basically, it's just an explanation of the ayah. Nazareth, he said, it revealed in uh, or because of two men who had a dispute. One of them said, let us go to the Prophet And the next one said, let us go to Ka'b ibn al-Ashraf, a man from the Jews. They ended up, they went to Umar ibn Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. فذكر له أحدهما القصة. So one of them فقال الذي لم يرضى برسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وسلم is it like that قال نعم فضربه فضربه بالسيف فقتله so عمر رضي الله عنه kill him and yeah this this author is not صحيح but it helps to clarify the meaning of the ayah this is what was mentioned in the tafsir طيب ااا يعني basically it is it is clear because it's basically I can explain the ayah. And this is the case. What is meant by the ayah is when people prefer the hukum of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala above the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the Shaykh Rahimahullah, he mentioned the issues. He said, فيه مسائل الولا تفسير آية النساء وما فيها من العيانة على فهم الطاغوت. The explanation of the ayat of Nisa and what? And that helps explaining the meaning of الطاغوت. And from it is seeking the legislation of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thani, tafsir wa ayatul baqarah, the explanation of the ayah in baqarah. Wa'idha qeele lahum la tafsiru fil ard. Don't, and when it is said to them, do not on earth, tafsir wa ayatul ard, the explanation, do not cast the earth, 
or it was um, after uh, it was fixed. The explanation of the ayah, are they seeking after the Ahiri? Al-Khamisa, ma qala al-Shabi fi sabab nuzul al-ayat al-Ula, what al-Shabi, rahimahullah, mentioned in regarding to the reason for the revelation of the first ayah. Al-Salis, tafsir al-Iman al-Sadiq wal-Kadib, the explanation of the correct Iman, of truth, truthful Iman, and people who lie in their iman, and that is the, the, the hypocrites. The story of Umar with the Munafiq. And that no one has iman or complete iman until his uh, desires are in total following of what the Prophet Sallallahu came with. Then the Sheikh Rahimahullah, he moves on to the next topic after that, and that is Babu Manjihad Amin al Isma'i Wasifat, the chapter that deals with whoever denies anything, any of the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what is meant by this chapter is that whoever denies a name, the the general hukum is that whoever deny the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his attribute, then that person you know, if someone denies the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his attributes, then that person is a kafir. And what is meant by the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has named himself with names that we call him by it. And they, we call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these names and they also indicate attributes. And so the names has two meanings. It's a name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's also, it has it, you know, it also has an attribute that is attached to it, like a Rahman, for example. A Rahman is the name of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and it in, and it means that He has mercy. So it shows the 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 the, the, the sifa, the attribute of a Rahma, of a Rahma, which is mercy. Like, right. is anything that shows. The completion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the things that shows the completion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, that we mentioned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran or the Sunnah. طيب. Now, denying or rebutting the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and or denying the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his attributes are of two types. When you deny the sifa itself a thing that was mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah and you deny it completely like denying uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above some people deny that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they denied the wording with the meaning. That type of denial is kufr, because you're denying the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ثم استوى على العرش الرحمن or الرحمن وعلى العرش استوى or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يدو الله فوق أيديهم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بل يداهم سلطة Whatever Allah says, you cannot deny the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And denying that is kufr. طيب. Denying the meaning. You say, yes, but you deny the meaning that was understood by the Salaf of the Ummah. And denying that meaning is not, and the first is major kufr, take someone out of the fall of Islam. The second is minor kufr, it doesn't take you out of the fall of Islam, but it's minor kufr. Allahu Akbar.
like then the Sheikh Rahimahullah he mentioned the ayat, he mentioned proofs to this issue. So he says the first wa qawlillahi ta'ala wa hum yakfurun al-Rahman and the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they disbelieve in Muhammad. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called it kufr that they deny the name al-Rahman. So Allah called, they, and this was because the people of Quraysh, they denied the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman. When they were told by Ar-Rahman, Bismillah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, they say, we own the Rahman, who is Ar-Rahman Al-Yamama. They were talking about Salim Al-Kadhab, he's the Rahman Al-Yamama. Uh, so they, call, they used to call him Rahman Al-Yamama. So they, they deny the name that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us, which is Ar-Rahman. So, Denying that name is kufr because Allah says, whom and they believe in Ar-Rahman. And Allah called it kufr. And like the names of Allah, denying the names of Allah is the denying of his attributes. He says, وَفِي صَحِيحِ الْبُخَارِ قَالَ عَلِيٌ عَنْهُ Ali said, talk to the people in ways in, or, or with things that they know. Do you want that Allah and his messenger be belied? So this hadith and this atar from Ali radiallahu ta'ala he's saying that you should tell the people what they can understand because if they deny something, then they will be attributing a lie to Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which is kufr. <laughs> so basically because the asma and the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are only known through the what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the messenger told us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so when someone comes up, comes and deny it then it is, as, it is as if he is attributing a lie that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger lied, uh, and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam lied in this situation, which is kufr. So Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu is saying, tell the people things that they can understand. Hadith al nasa bima yarifun. Aturiduna yukadab Allah wa rasuluh. Do you want Allah and his messenger be, be lied? Tayyip. And mention the author of Abdul Razak. قال أبو ابن عباس he says وروى عبد الرزاق عن معمر عن ابن طاووس أبي عبد الرزاق in his مصنف he reports ابن طاووس طاووس that ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه he saw someone يعني انتفض أنه رأى رجلا عن ابن عباس ما سمع حديث عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان بذلك. He said he saw a man who يعني انتفض is like he was agitated when he heard that is mentioned from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in regarding to the attributes of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in denial. He was agitated and he was in denial of the hadith. So Ibn Abbas Sallallahu Ta'ala Anhuma said, ما فرق هؤلاء أو ما فرق أو ما فرق هؤلاء It's, you can, you can, it's true. There's three different ways to read it. The first is ما فرقوا 
هؤلاء. And what is meant is that what do these people fear? What do they fear? And what are they afraid of? Attributing something to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala attributed to himself. Why are you afraid of attributing what Allah attributed to himself? Or, ما فرق هؤلاء? Alhamdulillah. Or, ما فرق هؤلاء? These people have not differentiated what yeah, it can be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what cannot be attributed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot differentiate between the haqq and the ba'a. And the meaning, the same meaning can be said, ما فرق, yani, these people do not differentiate between truth and the falsehood. He said, يجدون رقة عند مبهمه ويهلكون عند متشابه عند محكمه ويهلكون عند متشابه they they find or they are they accept cut the clear cut ayat the clear cut proofs and they were and they are destroyed when it comes to the mutashabi. What is meant by the muhkam and the mutashabi? Yani you have ayat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Ali Amran, Huwaladi Anzari Ali Kal Kitab minhu ayat muhkamat Hunna umul kitab you have the muhkamat the clear cut ayat and then you have the mutashabat which have which can have different meanings. And yani, what Ibn Abbas ta'ala, is saying here is that ta'ala, is saying here is that they do not differentiate between the truth and the falsehood. So when it comes to mutashabih, they end up being destroyed because they do not have knowledge. So they accept the muhkam, the clear cut ayah, they accept it. But then when it comes to the mutashabih that has some ambiguity around it, the ayah, then they fall into destruction. <coughs> and uh, this ather, basically, Ibn Abbas here, he is rebutting those who, the man who wanted to deny uh, an attribute from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said what he said here because he, he saw them that in denial of the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said, these people do not distinguish between the truth and the falsehood. Or what do he what does he fear in any? And then he says, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ayadkur rahman and karudarik fa and zarallahu fi him wahum furuna. Rahman. And this uh, this was reported by Mujahid, and it was reported by uh, Ibn Jarir, Rahmanullah, in his tafsir, that Mujahid said that when Quraysh heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioning the name Al-Rahman, Yadkur Al-Rahman, they denied that, and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala revealed, فَأَنزِلَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ وَهُمْ يَكْفُرُونَ بِالرَّحْمَانِ And they disbelieve in Al-Rahman. And basically, this ather, يعني, is basically in uh, the sabab, or the reason for the revelation of the ayah. Uh, because Quraysh denied that Allah's name was Ar-Rahman. Wallahu alam. Then he said, فِي مَسَائِلَ الْأُولَىٰ عَدَمُ الْإِيمَانِ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْأَسْمَاءِ وَالصِّفَاتِ He says, عَدَمُ الْإِيمَانِ That one can lose his iman because of something because of something, and because of denying something from the names and the attributes. The explanation of Ayat al-Ra'ad, not saying things that people may not understand. Understanding why, why you should say things that may cause people to misunderstand. أَنَّهُ يُفْضِي إِلَى تَكْذِيبِ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَلَوْ لَمْ يَتَعَمَّدِ الْمُنْكِرِ He says that it can lead to people denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and belying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even if they weren't, you know, they didn't do that out of purpose. 
الخامسة كلام ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنه لمن استنكر شيئا من ذلك وأنه أهلكه The statement of Ibn Abbas رضي الله تعالى عنه for the one who denied something like that something from the, 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 the names and the attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that that can be the reason for his destruction Allah تعالى علم and this we come to the end of today's class uh, سبحانك الله وبحمدك شهر لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك Um, if there is any questions, maybe I can see what, what can I answer from it. Like he said, um, who explained the fitna, Imam Ahmed, or the writer of the book? Now, this was explained by Imam Ahmed, the statement of Imam Ahmed, Atadrim al fitna, al fitna to shirk. That is from all, all of Imam Ahmed, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Yes, I said in, the, in, the, in talking about the Kamal of Allah, I said um, the completion, basically it's the, the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because complete happens after and yeah, not being complete. So that's a mistake. Sorry about that. Jazakumullah khairan. For the weak hadith of Umar, how do we use this as an explanation? Is it not possible to hypocrite it only for the, for the world again and not, was not kufr akbar? First of all, the, the is, is weak and it, but it just clarifies any it can be not kufr akbar and it doesn't necessarily mean that umar made it kufr akbar um some can be that umar ta'ala anhu, yani, because he got so angry that he he killed the guy but in the end the hadith is not yani, it's not a sahih hadith it's just something that the scholars mention like in the tafsir and so on to help to try and understand the ayah. And these are things that can enter into the ayah, but we do not take a hukum shari that is allowed to kill a person in, in such a situation because Umar Allah was killed in this situation until there's something, there's a proof. And there's a proof. And then the, the, you know, also you know, in this narration, Umar Allah went and killed a, guy, killed a man. And the, the, the way it is supposed to be done is that he was supposed to be brought to the Prophet وسلم, if It was the head, yani, if it was the head. So yani, there may be there may be some things that aren't yani, aren't fitting with the general rulings of Islam. Yani, ma, yani, because it's it's not a, an authentic hadith. Right? So we don't take a hukum shari from it, but it can help to explain the ayah. I don't know if that um yani, see the scholars mention sometimes they mention a hadith that are not as as Imam Ahmed mentioned, he said that when it comes to tafsir and so on, they would be more lenient because it's explaining something that is already there. The Quran is already there. It is sab, it is, it is already there. So you're just explaining it with something that was reported. It was reported. Now you're not taking, going to these hadith that are what was reported and are, are weak a hadith, you're not using it as a proof for a uh, hukum. You're just trying to understand the ayah. I don't know if that's clear, Yani. Wallahu alam. How Khawarij differ in this chapter? Um, yeah, I don't think um, there's the Khawarij. The Khawarij in the Tahkim, you see, the, the, the Muskil of the Khawarij, one of the, the main problems with the Khawarij is that they, they said that men cannot be used as judge in anything. That, I don't know if that's what you're talking about. The, the, the Mas'ala al Tahkim, when, when uh, Ali radiallahu anhu and Muawiyah, they agreed to let some of their companions can he, come to an agreement and make a judgment on what should happen. Um, the Khawarij then did takfir for Ali and for Muawiyah, whoever was involved in the tahkim. 
that tahkim is not uh, following a legislation other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That tahkim was meant what Ali and, and Muawir radiallahu ta'ala anhu, anhuma, anhum, what, what they wanted and the other companions involved like Abu Musa al-Ashari, al-As, all of these companions, what they wanted was to get the hukum of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would come together, they have a, 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 like a panel discussion between some Sahabi, some of the Sahaba to come to the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this situation. It is not that they were going to make up their own ruling in this situation. So the Khawarij, you know, they did take fear for them because they said that no one can make tahkim, no one can do, bring, do a legislation. But they weren't setting a new legislation, they were using the Quran and the Sunnah as a basis for what they wanted to meet to. Wallahu alam. Um, the two types of this, of denying the attributes. The first is that you deny the wording and the meaning. The wording and the meaning. The second is denying the meaning. Denying the meaning by uh, any changing it. The first, denying the wording and meaning, that is kufr. That is major kufr. The second is minor kufr. If someone commits a shirk, is that considered the fall of Islam? No, sure. The um, than the major sins, shirk as far minor shirk is greater than major sins. Wallahu a'lam. As for the the discussion between um, the, what the, the guy asked here, um, I don't know exactly what he's talking about. I don't know exactly which discussion he's talking about. So, um, wallahu a'lam. That shall be closer. Subhanallah, Hamlik, Tunlai, Lanta, a stock for a cow at two week lake. What is that, Mullah Hiran? Mubarakati.